Hello again, everybody. Zekatech is here with my WWE Monday Night Raw review for June the 12th, 2017. Taking place for the Cajun Dome in Lafayette, Louisiana, with this Animal SmackDown in Orleans. This will be the last WWE event in Louisiana until WrestleMania 34, taking place April 8th in Orleans. And Raw was under a little bit of pressure this week, kind of. Last week was the best Raw in a while, for a couple of lackluster Raw. Because the wall after extreme rules. And with wall ratings kind of up and down. And competing against game five of the NBA Finals. Wall needed a show to deliver. And especially pick up, like I said, the momentum from last week's good wall. And tonight. Uh, when it comes to action, a little bit of it. Especially the cruise has got little to no action at all in their segments. We got a welcome return in women's division. Because Raw's women's division is kind of not in a good position right now. They've been not booked good lately. Or at least we may have a little glimmer of hope, possibly. Plus, we had a little bit of a brawl. That was the thing. Storyline building. Not a lot of action tonight. The main event, good until the ending. They wanted to copy Dominion's ending of Omega Okada 2, huh? Anyway... Um, so the action, in-ring action was okay, you know, it was like, you know, up and down. But we had a lot of story development, especially heading towards Great Balls of Fire. We had, of course, a big brawl involving the main event of that match. We had a little bit more story with the now Bray Wyatt-Seth Rollins feud, following up from Bray interfering in Seth's match last week. A little bit more storyline thing, you know, with the end zone casting adding up. You know, you know, it's more about building story. And uh, the Titus Bray may have a new person who might be challenging Neville soon. So more about progressing storylines than in ring action today. And the, the thesis of that was our opening segment: Brock Lesnar coming out with Paul Heyman, still recovering from the attack from the new number one contender. Samoa Joe looking as much as he's been since he's been on the main roster. You know, he was Trip H's crony for the first couple of months of his WWE one, and now he's challenging Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal title at Great Balls of Fire, shocking us by winning that fatal fire last week at Extreme Wolf. So he even delivered all of his classic little promos about what happened last week with him being taken down by the Kikita clutch of Joe, and he's about to unleash the beast. Because, Joe, you are the worst case scenario. And you are a Samoan superstar, but no other Samoan wants to deal with you. So there as Heyman was going down on Joe, pushing him up, then tearing him down. Joe would come up. And a brawl was on after Joe would headbutt Lesnar, then got into a brawl, and nobody could hold him back. Not the CF security that was brought out by GM Kurt Angle, no, the majority of the wall locker room could break up these two. They were just exploding. With Joe ending up kicking the out of Lesnar, kicking him out of the ring, despite being held back by basically the entire wall roster. And I'm glad they just went to cut to the chase and just let these two brawl sort of like having him go for a few weeks to, sus to build suspense for the brawl. Like some may say they should have built the suspense, especially with the rumors. That Brock will be on every single wall going into the pay-per-view. But they just cut to the chase and went to the brawl. And we've seen kind of brawls before, but it was a great brawl. They got the crowd going. It made Joe look more vicious than he's been lately. And like I said, that's from a, this is a nice, pleasant surprise seeing Joe against Lesnar. He's a Balor against Lesnar. Balor will get the universe a title back one day. But not against Lesnar. And we saw a Balor package. We didn't see La we didn't see Balor yet again on Wall for the second week in a while. Nor happily, this is one of the few walls with no Roman Reigns. Yay! It's only possible tonight's Wall. You know, a little bit of like this Wall. Like I said, the action was okay, up and down action, more about development. But some would say some would miss Reigns, but I don't miss Reigns. But he'll be back next week to announce his opponent for SummerSlam. Will it be Braun Strowman to have a real payoff match? Or maybe John Cena. I mean, Cena, as you know, he's coming back to SmackDown on July 4th, but he may do like a free agent thing. 
that's what the Dutchies are saying now, by him having a free agent thing. So, maybe it will challenge Reigns, but for now, Reigns will announce his opponent next week. For SummerSlam. Is it going to be against Dorman or Cena or somebody completely different? Now, on to our first real matchup of the night. A continuing budding little ivory between Dean Ambrose and Elias Sampson. Two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, these two faced off. Men came in and attacked Samson, causing Ambrose to get disqualified playing on there. Ambrose gets disqualified stipulation in the Extreme Rules match, which was never really implemented that well. It was teased a couple times, but Ambrose going to DQ, but never really happened. And then, last week, the match never really happened between these two, because Miz came on the screen, and Ambrose got laid out by Samson's DD swing and neck breaker. So now tonight they have a proper match, and at least I'll say this, they had a proper ending. We didn't have a DQ ending, nor a counter ending. We had a clear ending. Well, somebody got pinned. But with a little help. So, uh, I like Samson being lost. I didn't like the comp, the way he comes out to sing a song, and the way he's getting booed, and the way he's like, don't cheer until I'm done. So, I'm liking the way he's on main roster. Some say it's too soon, but I think he's doing well on main roster. He's looking pretty good in this matchup against Ambrose. I'd like to see him battle competition. At least he's taking on a top guy, because two weeks ago, after his first match of Ambrose, he took on a jobber. Jabber? Jabber? So, these two was exchanging blows. Sam comes with big clothes lines and kicks. Ambrose came in like a house of fire with his lunatic clothes line attempt, but then all of a sudden, Miz and Maurice came out to distract Ambrose for a bit. And Ambrose and Miz did get a little ball on the outside. I'm very interested to see that that wasn't kind of a disqualification with Ambrose attacking Miz like that. But Miz was using Maurice as a shield. And then a little ball going on. And I thought we were going to be like a screwy ending because Ambrose was getting counted out, but he got back in. But then he got pummeled, stumped in the back by Samson. Got the swing and neck breaker delivered to him by Samson in a 1 2 3 victory. Yes, like I said, there was someone getting pinned, but it was Elias Samson pinning Ambrose with a little help from the Miz. Oh, Samson won with a little help from the Miz. Continuing his feud stemming from Extreme Wars and before that. Now, there's a little bit of tension now between. Miz and Maurice. Maurice was not too happy about Miz's paranoia about Ambrose looking around the shadows, ruining the championship celebration. Wasn't too thrilled. And she wasn't even acknowledging Miz at all. You know, still upset about that. But paranoia about Ambrose looking around may get worse. As Miz wanted another match. Well, he wanted a match. But tonight, he would have to find himself a tag team partner. Because he had a little backstage competition between Heath Slater and Wino. Because he wanted to take care of Dean Ambrose. But Angle's like, take care of it yourself. So he was trying to get Slater involved to align himself with them and promise him an IC title match. But then Wino got it, got felt and ignored. Because Miz was addressing Slater the whole time. And that's when Wino's like, get yourself a partner. We'll get a match. Now, top of the tag match. Later on, speaking of tag, because we saw another exchanging promos from both Gold Dust and Off Troop tonight. You know, at least they're keeping him in the picture. You know, a lot of promos aired, not just Woman's promo. We saw a Balor promo, and of course, the two promos from Gold Dust and Off Troop. You know, we're going to see these two wrestle off. You know, at least they're keeping us informed of their rivalry by these promos every week. They're good promos. You know, hitting. Leading up to the big battle should not be of this importance. You know, a mid card tag team breaking up, but they're doing it with such importance, especially with Goldust turning him. Really going back to the old school Goldust that we knew and loved, or loved to hate it back in the 90s. So, it doesn't see how they're going to do about this and how is Goldust going to be booked. Because they have a great opportunity here. They messed them up with the Goldust Stardust feud that never really went anywhere, you know, before Cody left. It was interesting to see Gold Dust's promo today because it's the two year anniversary of the death of Dusty Rhodes. 
And on to the first of our two Tuesday matches this evening. A rematch from last week's 205 Live. Cedric Alexander taking on Noam Dahl. Once again without Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox did lose the mixed tag match with Dahl against Alexander and Fox on uh, Banks. Sasha Banks. Last Sunday she's finding a minor neck injury. So she was on 205 Live last week and wasn't on Raw again this week. She was video chatting with Noam Dahl wearing a neck brace. When he thought to get revenge on Cedric Alexander, he walked in the back, still video chatting with her. And as he was kissing Foxy goodbye, all of a sudden, as Foxy was still on the line and on the Titantron, her face chat was on the face side was on the screen, Dawn would get nailed from the high from behind by Alexander. Right to the low ball check in the one, two, three, quick 20 second victory for Cedric Alexander. Hopefully he's done with Noam Dahl. He said he was done, and hopefully he is done. And like I said, Kuzlein action. You know, he's been booked a, booked a lot crappy, you know, since they've been brought up to the main roster. So, and there's an emphasis of it with this short match, and of course the another match that never really started later on in the Kuzlein division. But now, on to the home wrecker. I mean, Bray Wyatt. Of course, as we all know now, news came about today that Bray Wyatt's wife filed for divorce, stating that he, Bray Wyatt, had an affair with the announcer JoJo. It was he who insinuated, not she, from what we've been told from the Dutch Chief in the reports. Yeah, JoJo's hot and she's got that ass, but dang it, can't believe you left your wife for JoJo. I think a lot of men would be like, I'd leave my wife there for JoJo. You know, JoJo is hot, but dang, would you leave your wife for a girl like JoJo, who's very young, too, probably? Probably younger than Bray. Unless Bray's the same age. I don't know how old he is, though. So, anyway, the whole Wrecker was the character. As he had a little, It was interesting, he was on the screen first. Then a little bit of promo about Seth Rollins, and he came out to the ring to deliver the continuous promo on Seth Rollins. Now he interrupted Seth Rollins' main event match against the Warren Joe last week. I think his music hit, but he never really came out. It helped Joe win. So now we got a Bray Wyatt Seth Rollins feud. Well, I mean, the Balor Wyatt feud didn't go anywhere. We saw Wyatt get involved in a match that also involved Seth Rollins and Balor, a Fatal 4 way number contenders match for the IC Championship a few weeks back. And Balor got screwed over by Wyatt. I thought they'd be a feud. Maybe the same thing for SummerSlam. But we got a Wyatt Rollins feud. Because Wyatt was targeted by Rollins last week, saying that he's a false martyr, not a true martyr, and all that stuff. And all of a sudden, Rollins had come out to confront him. Had a little promo, great little promo. I want to be martyr. And as they're about to exchange, maybe go physical. The lights run out again. The music cut, and Wyatt brain disappeared. It went back on the screen. So it's interesting to end his little promo. So we're probably going to see these two at Great Balls of Fire. Yes. Can't believe that name. They changed the logo too. It looked like a penis. And then they changed the logo to more same promo. When people were realizing that the original logo with the flame and the two balls looked like a penis. <laughs> so, and I heard Jerry Lee Lewis was almost going to sue WWE for copyright infringement. But of course, Jerry Lawler, who I did not know this, so... I went to a local wrestling show, XICW, and a fan told me that Jerry Lee Lewis and Jerry King Lawler are cousins. I knew Jerry Lawler and Hunky Talk Man were cousins. But I didn't know he was cousin with Jerry Lee Lewis. So, there you go. So it's interesting to see a Wyatt Wallace feud. You know, they feuded before when they were both on the Wyatt family and Shield side during their great feud back in 2014. So we'll see how this goes. And will Wallace. Lose or the eater of pins. Lose again. Now, next matchup, we have the continuing Kalisto Titus brand saga. This is a fear that doesn't end. It will go on and on. But we got a new coil now. Be the kill to Zawa. He was taught last week by Titus on both Wall and 205 Live, and he was invited. To ringside for Apollo's match against Galisto. I'm happy that the 205 Live guys are breaking out of the bubble. They're not just battling each other. 
you know, Aesop, you know, the two or five guys I'm acting with Sasha Banks, especially knowing about Alicia Fox and acting with, uh, uh, with Sasha, and now we got Okio Tozawa getting a little bit involved with Titus Brand. Wanted or not, he is getting forced into this situation. So, these two have a little match. The miss, the two misused guys, Police and Cruz, will have a little matchup. Not as good as their pre show match at Extreme Rules last week, but it was decent. End of an ending. Cruz would get the victory. At Police were going for big moves. He was going for high flying moves early, big kicks. Her commandos, all that stuff there. Cruz with Autumn. Your nails, big power bump finish in the victory for Apollo getting another victory for the Titus brand. And Titus basically picked the hell out of Tozawa. Just lifted him up over the barricade because he was front well and got to force him to take a selfie with them. So, uh, there you go. Of Tozawa was taught in by Apollo's mentor, new mentor now. Titus saying that Tozawa is the new. Cruiserweight champion in the maker. And he'll beat Neville. Well, Neville was not too thrilled about that treat, as we would see later on, when Neville would come out later for a match, as I mentioned, would never happen. Then we had a couple women's segments. First, we had a Bailey interview. Once again, proving why Dory's fucking up the Bailey character even more. But why he didn't go extreme, saying that, oh, I don't want to hurt people. I want to make smiles, make her look like a geek. You know, we love the Bailey gimmick in, w in NXT. It was done so well. But to make it look like a fucking dweeb. Especially say, oh, I got my diaries. Like, dang it. Like, she's got the kid character a little bit, you know. But don't, like, yeah, an inner kid. Don't make her, like, into a real fucking kid. You know what they're doing with her character. Even hugging Corey Graves at the end of the interview. God, God, speaking of Graves, we didn't get any enhancements in this Kurt Angle storyline. Angle kind of confronted Miz. Because Miz kind of insane me about Angle's personal problems, but we didn't see anything about Angle and Graves' storyline tonight. We didn't get that enhancement. That's the only little negative. But the only storyline that didn't get enhanced was the Graves' Angle storyline. So we had the Bailey segment, and then we had Alexa Bliss coming out. Talk about giving Nia Jax a match last week, promising her a title match. You know, we didn't see Nia for weeks. She finally got a title match after teasing a storyline with Bliss. But then disappeared. But then uh, Bliss and JJ got herself DQ'd after attacking both Mickey James and Dana Brooke were out at ringside. Who uh, Bliss was trying to recruit to team up against Nia, but declined the offer. And we would see Nia Jax come out, not too thrilled about Bliss cheating out of a match, but then turning it over and saying, Oh, it wasn't me. It was Mickey and Dana's fault. And then Dan came out. Saying that we had an eye problem, but no, you didn't. We said it last week, we'll say it again. And then we saw Emma return. Yeah, hopefully she stays injury free. You know, she's been injured a lot last year. You know, she was starting a Dana Book feud again when she first came back after Mania, but then got hurt during the European tours, been gone for like almost a month. And now she's back again. And then Sasha came out. Now, Sasha was in that back segment when Alexa was trying to recruit. Dana and Mickey. Sasha was in it, but she left. Now Sasha got in it tonight. And we had a little ball after Bliss got attacked by the microphone to the face by Banks. And we had ourselves an impromptu six woman tag. At least we seen Bliss and Banks maybe tease. Let's see Banks back in the title pitch after being floundering for a bit, losing a position in the women's division, and being Forcing the mid-card feuds like the one with Lisa Fox, but now with Alicia Fox, and you say it that way. Huh. <laughs> no, see that Nick and Jim mentioned earlier. They need Banks something to do. So at least Banks is back in the high hockey, back in the town of Petra. It's a little sloppy match. Bliss got a little bit involved, attacking Brooke, and then Dana Brooke and uh, Emma would get into a ball. Like I said, their feud will probably finally continue. After being teased last month and then being held off until Emma's return from another injury, as I mentioned. There's been bubbled and isolated until Sasha Banks got the hot tag in. Mickey's like an afterthought in this case. I kind of mentioned about Mickey James before about 
Hook coming back. It's kind of like the Dudley bar is coming back. A little bit of excitement, then it died off after she gets stuck in the lower mid card. Like what happened with the Dudleys when they came back two years ago. So, Banks came in the double knee stomp. She did a big double knee stomp off the top rope. Oh, that was actually the double knees from Mickey James. She didn't get much action in the match, but she did do like a double a jumping move off the top rope with double knees onto the face of Nia Jax. Bliss walked out of the match. When Emma was trying to get tagged, trying to get a tag, leaving Jackson Emma all alone, and Emma being prone to the bank statement in the victory for the good person team. At least Banks got the victory. Of course, before the bank statement, Emma was trying to go up for in from behind after the whole bliss walking out thing, but then she got caught into the bank statement. So there you go. Banks and Bliss. Bliss was watching from the uh, Titan Tron as she was still walking out. She was still able to see the ending of the match with Bliss seeing Banks make Emma tap out to the Banks team. So we could see a Bliss Banks feud. We had, they had a match over there, a multi person match, and Banks got pinned by Bliss to get the number one contendership to take on Bailey back in April after Nia did all the dirty work. So. Now Banks probably wants revenge, and that's how we're going to probably see this women's match hopefully being booked in the women's division lately on Raw post-Mania. And especially post-Shake-Up. You know, about Superstar Shake-Up would be great. But, you know, with Charlotte gone and Becky should have been on Raw, but hey, Becky's on SmackDown doing well. SmackDown women's division is doing good, as you know. Women's Money to Bank match next week, that's going to be incredible. And Raw's women's just stagnant, but at least they're putting... Trying to maybe putting Sasha Banks back to where she belongs in the title picture after being fumbling for months. Now, on to our tag team match Beauty and the Man Beast, Heath Slater and Rhino. They've been kind of been floundering. It's been a floundering. They've been floundering since the Superstar Shakeup. They're on top of the SmackDown heap as the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Cinderella Story. But ever since they've been on Wall, they've been kind of been minimally used. Probably just used for a main event. That show even is still on. I know Superstars may have got cancelled. But anyway, they, of course, as I mentioned earlier, they got into a backstage segment with Miz, leading to this tag team match. Miz needed a partner. The Dancing Bear from the Championship Celebration came out to help Miz out. It's like, Because we've seen Miz and the Miz be tag team partner storyline before. And it was that Bray Wyatt came out in the middle of the match, making us assume that he was his partner. But the partner did come out. And that was the bear. So Miz is like confused, but he still fought anyway, he tried to fight off Slater and Rhino. Coming up with some big double team moves. And then a tag, a blind tag from the bear, getting a little action in on Slater. Then Miz got back in the ring, thinking the bear was the Ambrose again. So he took him out with a skull crushing finale. Took him out, took his mask off, but it wasn't Ambrose. So this is when things got very interesting. After the bear got beaten up by Miz and got taken out to the house and got unmasked, Miz is beating up on Slater some more, and then the bear would come back in the ring. Referee was turned a little bit, was distracted by Miz. And then the bear would deliver the dirty deeds on the Slater. So that means the bear switched. That means the bear was indeed Ambrose this time. You know, there was two bears. The first bear got knocked up by Miz, and the new bear came in. They delivered dirty deeds on the slider. And Miz was distracted by his wife. And then he got a little ball of Ambrose. And then Ambrose inadvertently knocked Miz onto Mary as he was standing on the apron at that point. And Mary's walked out on Miz. Who got dirty deeds by Ambrose, and Slater was still out from the dirty deeds that he got from Ambrose. So Ambrose helped Slater lift his body onto Miz. One, two, three. With a low help from Ambrose, he Slater pins the IC champion. So maybe now we're going to see a Slater Miz thing? Because Miz said if he aligns. If, if Slater would align with Miz, he would get a title match. 
but Ambrose helped Slater pin the Miz in the segment. So at least Slater got a win. Yeah, after being kind of marginally used with him and Rhino on SmackDown on Raw since the Superstar Shakeup, as I mentioned. Now we have a possible Slater Miz feud stemming. I mentioned also in the early on in the video we have a little Miz Maurice tension building. You know, Mrs. Paranoia, thinking that Ambrose is everywhere. You know, making his wife very upset because, you know, he ruined the championship celebration. You know, attacked the grandfather clock, thinking it was Ambrose in that package. And then tonight, getting inadvertently ran into Maurice on the apron, knocking her over and getting a little injury. So a little bit of a tension between Maurice and Miz at this point. So we'll see if their relationship gets patched up. Or Ambrose ignite the flame even more. Ignite the fuel to the fire that is Miz and Maurice's relationship now being challenged with all these little incidents happening. With Ambrose being involved in the, the mind games. The paranoia games. So there you go. Now on to our scheduled second Cruiserweight matchup. Which one against Neb? Now, these two battled before for the uh, Cruiserweight title. It was with Swan, who lost the Cruiserweight title to Neville the Royal Rumble, starting his reign as the King of the Cruiserweights. So as Swan was coming out to the ringside area, here comes Neville from behind, just attacking with Swan before matching got started, throwing his jacket off, tossing him against the barricade, tossing him back into the wings of Saturn, the submission hold. The match never really started. Because the beatdown happened. Until, of course, the beatdown led to the Wings of Saturn. Never did grab the microphone saying, Austin Aries, TJP, and Witch Swan. Who's left? And just tossed Witch Swan out of the ring. And it called out Okira Tozawa, as I mentioned earlier as well. Tozawa was taught in by a tweet from Tyler Sonier as the next Cruiserweight Champion. So now we got a Neville Tozawa feud happening. Well, it's great because never needs a new opponent because he's beating every babyface on 205 Live. You know, he beat TJP, who's probably now a cruiserweight babyface now because the relationship broke off. Because TJP got this title match as he wanted on 205 Live and lost. Aries is out for a while. He's resting, nursing some injuries, taking a little break. Uh, Gower was beaten by Neville. And now that Tozawa is done with D. Brian Kendrick, now he gets to be open for a feud against anybody. Now that anybody is the Grizzly Champion Neville. So probably see these two at Great Balls of Fire. So we got a little building for possible matches at Great Balls of Fire with Swan and Neville leading to the Tozawa and Neville match. Possible Wild and Wyatt match. So we'll see how these storylines go. Leading towards that paper view. Speaking of storylines, the Enzo and Cass drama continues as they were scheduled once again to wrestle for the Pajillion. Kazilian, got trillium time, Gallows and Anderson. This is a fear that never ends. It will go on and on, my friend. Of course, last week, these two teams were supposed to face off until Kaz, in a little bit of a twist, he got attacked after weeks of Enzo getting attacked. Kaz got attacked. And then Big Show came in to replace him and got the victory. But as Enzo and Kaz's music would hit, they didn't come out. And Cash is taken out yet again. And we need to notice that in the background, the revival were back there. Dash Rider is clear. Yay! Dash Rider is clear. Got clear today. So we may see revival back in action soon. Of course, building another seed saying that they were the ones who did it. You know, the revival did it or was it a red herring? You know, everyone's thinking they were red herring, but they're being seen after Cass was found attacked. Saying that one big blow to the head knocked him out. But despite the referee saying that Enzo needs a new partner, Cass scrambled. He stumbled out and wrestled the match anyway. He started the match against Gallows and Anderson. He was trying to do his big moves, big kick, including a bio elbow. But every time he did a big move, he just stumbled. You know, he was like still stunned from his attack. I can't believe he still ran at all. Tagged in Enzo. It's by Enzo's best efforts. Basically a two-on-one match. With no one to help him. With Kaz being all loopy. He'd be taken down. By the club with the 
Magic and learn the victory. Which is meaningless at this point, because Enzo hasn't beaten him so many times before. But Kyle Booty's been lost since he's been on WWE for the last year. Especially after picking up with uh, AJ Styles in the draft. Like, that was the best they were booked with AJ Styles. Until the brand split. Split him with AJ on SmackDown and Dallas and Anderson on Wall. Who I was hoping to see a Battle Club tease last week, but never really happened. So then the beatdown will continue on Enzo until Big Show would come out to make the rescue yet again for Big Enzo. Chasing Gals and Anderson out of the ring. And as Cass was coming too, you would see that Big Show and Enzo were hugging each other. You know, being all buddy-buddy. They had a little confrontation backstage and Big Cass insinuated that Big Show was the one. They kind of said it last week, insinuated Big Show was the one to attack Cass and they insinuated yet again. And Enzo was told by Big Show that his partner was SAWFT swarfed, building a little bit of the tension. You know, continuing the tension that's been built. Is it going to be Revival revealed, or is it going to be Enzo attack Cass, or Cass attack Enzo? But with the twist, with Cass being attacked last week, after weeks of Enzo being attacked, led to, is Enzo doing it? Just setting himself up? Or is Cass just beating up himself? As the club was saying. You know, beating himself up to set up Enzo. But we'll see how this storyline goes. Been progressing the last couple of weeks, slowly but surely. Hoping the payoff is good. And the payoff should not be Big Show. Should be Revival or even better. Balor Club with Gallows and Anderson. And we haven't seen Balor. And we haven't seen Balor. I thought we'd see a Balor Club. I thought Balor would replace Big Cass and then turn on Enzo. Starting the Balor Club, but that never happened. When you want to do something shocking, WWE, they can, but sometimes they blow an opportunity. But an opportunity was taken advantage of, as the Hardys will return at WrestleMania. Yeah, we saw it coming, but it was still cool to see him actually do it. And they had a little few going with Sheamus and Nazala losing the tag team titles to them at Extreme Rules in a cage match. And now we have the end match for their feud, or so we thought. The best two out of three balls match. With Shazam, Shazalo, Sheamus and Zalo defending the tag titles against the Hardys. Jeff would start off the match, trying to come with his fast move, trying to get the quick first fall, but then as he and Sheamus was balling, Jeff got nailed against the post by Sheamus. Sheamus would quickly capitalize with a boot kick and the one, two, three, first fall, quickly going to Sheamus and Zazal. With the Hardys now being forced to win to stay. So the Jeff got isolated a bit, but the quick tags by Samus and Zazal, especially after that first fall. Jeff would get the big tag to his brother Matt, coming with the side effect and making Sheamus eat the, uh, the turnbuckles before even in the odds. With the twist of fans, Zazal, after he got tagged in, and the second fall was to the Hardys. So we are tied up. One for a piece. We head towards the signing third on. We had a lot of near balls, and this was a pretty intense matchup with these two teams. have been very intense matches, whereas the payback match, not as good as the previous encounters, but still a pretty decent main event. And I was like, this main event's got a super purpose. Like, these two have fought many times, and it's the first main event they've had together. This got to be something big in this main event to happen. Are we going to finally see the broken hardy? Matt did say on a podcast that the booking gimmick will come eventually, not just a matter of if, but when. And a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is the moment where he's going to be broken tonight. But, we had a little bit of a weird ending. As both teams were exchanging near balls with both teams breaking up the counts, you know, Cesare, Seamus and Zog, great spot was, uh, they took Hardy out for a bit, Matt out, into the middle up there, and Seamus delivered a big Moved the mat, put him in a rope, and then Sheamus, says partner, says on the outside with a little nasty uppercut. Great double team work there. And every time one of the teams would pin somebody, the partner would break up the count. We saw Jeff break up a lot of counts. We saw Matt pinning Sheamus at one point after a side effect that was very close to getting the victory. But then Shazal would pull Sheamus underneath the ropes, and they had a little ball. All four would brawl on the outside. Referee was counting, and we ended in a tie. Double count out. 
Dory is like, hey, as I said earlier, Dominion calls at the Omega Oak Academy match. I need to see that match. Probably will see it on Access TV. I don't subscribe to New Japan World. I subscribe to so many subscription services to begin with. And who in the network? So I'm like, I, I always spend a lot for services. So I love New Japan, but I spend too much on services. So I don't subscribe to New Japan World. I rely on Access TV. Even though they're way months behind. I'm here in the alternate air of Dominion June 30th. The day before they go live. They're going to air the G1 special from LA Live. So that's kind of cool. So they're like, hey, the minion ending at Okada Omega go to a draw? Let's have a draw ourselves to end war. Dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. So dumb. So we ended the tie. Double count out. And I was like, damn it. So are we going to have another match? Where the winner must, you know, no, no count outs, no DQs. The feud's gonna continue now. We thought this would be the rumble match. And also the match that Matt will become broken. Neither happened. We didn't have a conclusive finish, nor did we have a broken Matt Hardy. Keep teasing it. Still does the lead, but we're never gonna see it happen. Fuck Impact. Fuck that owl. Hashtag fuck that owl. So, there you go. We have a little way to end wall. Leaves me to end with Woman Wayne's tonight, but. Weird ending with the tag team title match ending in a draw. You know, a tie. At one fall apiece. No one won the third fall. So, they want to copy Dominion's ending of a draw. Not a good way to end a television show. You know, with the action already lacking, you know, with the action already being sub off and going up against the NBA Finals tonight, you know what I mean? Having a weird ending like that didn't help, it didn't do anybody any favors. Hopefully, ratings don't show that. So, there you go. And that is it for my WWE review tonight. Thank you so much for watching. With that in mind, y'all been attacked by the review from Zach. See you later. Bye-bye.